Hello, I'm Faith Cosby. I'm presenting Phenomenology and How It Influenced Nursing Research and Evidence-Based Practice by Applying It to Real-World Situations, Including Benefits and Limitations. Phenomenology attempts to understand people's perceptions, perspectives, and understandings of a particular situation. There are several variants of phenomenology, but they all share similar focus on describing lived experiences. Two of the variants are heuristic research, which focuses more on what is my experience or feeling about a particular situation. The interest here is how the participant describes the lived experience as well as the researcher experiences as they relate to the phenomena. Critical narrative research focuses on what story or stories a person tell of their experience. There are two main types of phenomenological research. Descriptive, which uses the concept of bracketing. Bracketing is putting aside what the researcher already knows about the experience being investigated and approaching the data with no preconceptions about the phenomenon. This may mean avoiding conducting literature research in order to prevent influencing the interview. Interpretive phenomenology believes it's impossible to rid the mind of preconceptions and approach something completely neutral. When conducting phenomenological research, the data collected should be from open-ended questions. For example, what did you feel when, or can you explain or describe, etc. There are several ways to collect the data. An example would be storytelling, diaries, drawings, etc. Note that the role of the researcher is to facilitate the process. The descriptive stage, the researcher will recognize common themes or essence that start to emerge while the, which will be analyzed to, to get a pure and clear description of the phenomena. The advantages of phenomenological research are clear understanding of the individual phenomena, and rich data collection. The disadvantages to the difficult to detect or prevent research biases. You have small sample sizes which makes it difficult to say it's seen in the general population and qualitative nature of it may be difficult to um, present in a manner that's useful to the practitioners. Now putting it all together to apply to, to, to apply phenomenological research to a real world situation. I used an article which looked at the phenomena of nursing care toward individuals with a diabetic foot. When posing the question for research, make sure that it is clear and allows simple answers and definitions as well as allow participants to give spontaneous statements about the situation they have experienced. An example would be, what is it like for you to live with the pathological complication developed from diabetes? Know the objective of the, of the study. Describe. Decide on the sample size. The sample size is usually small and what methodology will be used. When looking at data analysis, the researcher wants to choose how the data will be analyzed which will be based on how the, how the data was collected. For example, if the data was collected by transcript, the researcher will read each transcript and extract the information on that on this, this, extract the information that's pertinent to the researcher to interpret. After interpreting each participant's statement, feelings that were discovered and themes should be should emerge. When looking at the results and discussion, you want to know what were the response to the questions. So if the question was, what is it like for you to live with a pathological complication developed due to your diabetes, a response might be, I had to amputate my toes. That made me so nervous. It made me want to cry. I even told the women at the Santa Casa Hospital, you know what's worse? You left me here alone. You think I have the so-called cancer to be left here to rot. You left me alone in this room. The researcher interpreted the statement 
as the participants seeing all her meaning dismantled, her nervousness expressed as feeling uneasy, hopeless, and with no sense of direction. The conclusion should show what's revealed in the study. For example, based on the previous question, the participant felt that the staff hid from them and avoided developing an effective relationship with them. They expressed suffering as resulting from lack of care from the healthcare team. Emerging from the study, it appears that it would serve the patient better if the healthcare team would provide care with love, patient, and concern, being kind and opening their soul to find understanding of the patient's experience of the foot complication. The advantages and disadvantages to nursing research and evidence-based practice of looking um, at the diabetic complication study are the advantages that it revealed that the patients felt isolated and avoided while hospitalized after medical procedure. Knowing this allows for the improvement in patient care and increase in patient satisfaction. The disadvantages are you have a small sample size which doesn't allow for generalization. Reliability and validity is difficult to establish, and biases are difficult to control. According to Edwards, traditional research methods in nursing use of reflection, written dialogue, and narratives to generate knowledge can be used to identify areas which research is necessary. This links the process of reflection to research design with the goal of developing evidence-based practice. This concludes part four of the five series PowerPoint of phenomenology. Part five to follow, which describes how phenomenology continues to influence nursing practice.